All right. So someone asked me recently if I could uh, make my my uh, template available, my mix template, and uh, so I did, and I put a link to it on my website. You can download pretty much my like standard setup for um, which I'm in right now uh, for for mixing. But I figured I should uh, explain a little bit how it works if anyone's interested in uh, using some elements of it. So here I put a bunch of instruments, well, stuff that I was working on uh, in, a, in a mix right now. But um, yeah, so there, there's a few uh, basic routing things that I do that, uh, you know, kind of funnel back in into a few buses all the way down to my, um, to my stereo out channel, which is here. And uh, so, you know, just to start with, if we go to drums, if you know whenever i get more like a lot of channels that i'll want to end up processing together if i want to put an eq on, on a bunch of channels well i'll just send them all to a bus here so here for example i got my kick and i got one two three four kick channels that are going into here stereo channel because some of the kicks are stereo which are samples in this case and i've got my my kick in and kick out mic and then i'm setting up a parallel compression here which is um, for all the kicks, you know, I could send the um, individual mics to the parallel, but I prefer, once I got my, my sound set up, like my, my kick tone, I just want to smash it and bring it up a bit and get uh, an extra, uh, par uh, you know, compressed signal uh, control, which I can just do with, with my fader here. And important thing for my, uh, my parallel, I send from my bus uh, post fader post that means after the fader so if we t if we uh, turn the fader down the signal still send sending in the same proportion so that's not going to affect it so that's the general ideas with my buses and my parallels set right beside it so here for overheads i've got an overhead bus i don't always do this but in um you know in big in uh, certain cases i will uh, send my two overheads to a bus like this so i can put an eq on both at the same time um, in this session, I sent my toms to a bus again because I wanted to uh, kind of beef them up all together and do some imaging on the toms. There's something I kind of got an idea for that. Rooms. So I've got two rooms in our uh, in the tracking room. I also have two what what I call shit mics, which is uh, well, one of them's not really a shit. So I've got this old Radio Shack mic, uh, a trick that I learned from Rob Heaney. I put that on the ground beside the kick. Then I have. Um, uh, a 44 old school ribbon or like a dark mono drum mic so this thing's like picking up the whole drum set so these two mics are ambience and then i got two room mics all the way back in the in the room so those are ambience mics as well they all go into this one room channel here uh room bus and uh and then all these buses send out to my drum bus so this is all funneling down to one fader for drums i don't adjust volume here ever if I do any uh, because if, if my drums is getting too hot and I drop this I might be clipping on the way into some plugins and this won't solve the issue so uh, <clears throat> so yeah so everything's coming back down here some of the channels which aren't being routed to a group are going straight to the to the drums like the snare mics here um, same kind of thing I have another parallel set up on my drums um, that's a uh, I've got an SSL bus comp on this from waves uh fucking great smack from this thing really uh can really get some punch out of the drums um then next thing bass here i don't have a bus for my bass i'm only using one channel in this session we only did a di bass and i've got its parallel yet again um for my parallel i'm using an api uh, 2500 i really love this comp for parallel but you can use anything i pr i prefer uh modern more modern more of a modern compressor this isn't well this is pretty modern i guess but something fast um something that has like a really fast attack and a really fast release with as much ratio as you can in this case we have infinity uh, i'll i can talk more about uh, parallel but there it is all my parallels are sent post fader like i explained earlier so we can adjust the volume of this independently from the volume of this with without the uh, the signal in this channel changing as I move this around. So I've got two, uh, two stable signals that I can control individually, um, which I, I prefer for mixing. Um, same kind of thing, I've got a percussion um, set up here that we're mixing right now in a tune. So what I have is two spot mics, two overheads, both going into 
my percussion bus so I can, if I want to put some tapes in and drive this or like open up the top end or whatever, I just do it straight from the bus. Um, uh, Guiro here, perk two. This was a, a Guido. Guiro. Um, just like that. Um, two congas. I, I've got the two rooms on this, but I'm just using uh, the two spot mics in the session. Acoustic guitar. So my classic setup, I made a, a video on this uh, talking about how I track and mix acoustic more talk more about how I track same thing going to an acoustic bus because I will do a lot of processing on the whole thing together and its own parallel set up the same way um, acoustic I'll have one close mic that sounds like that, that's got proximity that sounds rich sounds beefy and then I'll have two room mics that are probably back a meter and a half uh, split at about uh, a meter and a half sort of a, a triangle um, and I'll find some like interesting spots. I'll try to move them around to get them in better phase with my close mic. Once I got that, I can open up the rooms and get a little bit of air, make the, the acoustic more, take more space in your stereo spectrum. So that's my quick setup for acoustic here. Brass, same kind of thing. Now, if I have solo brass versus section brass, I will treat them differently. These brass here are playing in section. So we have, uh, we've got themes that are played and harmonized in, uh, uh, throughout the three instruments here, which is tenor sax, trumpet, trombone, and in other sessions I have a berry in, on this album. So what I like for brass is compressing them all together. So I do this straight from the bus here, and I like driving them, doing uh, maybe, uh, you know, I'll do some um, some saturation. So I'll put that on the bus as opposed to individually. Because if I do it individually, I can help define everybody's own tone, but I don't necessarily want to do too much of that because I want them to glue together and to have the three instruments kind of sounding like a section well I'm going to process them as a section and I'll image them as a section and I'll, and I'll do some stuff from here I'll still work on their individual tones when I have a solo for example the whole section playing then we got a sax solo I will split the track and do another sax track and then mix it separately either sending it through the bus if it still sounds good. I don't want the tone to change too much. I just want it to be a, a little bit more forward. And if there's like if there's funky stuff that's happening on the section, I don't want it to cut through too much on uh, the solo if it, there's like funny imaging. But that I'll manage once. That's it. I'll man I manage once I get there and I kind of make a decision as to which is better. Um, same thing here, back vocals, all going through a bus with their own parallel. Back vocals, same thing. If they're playing as a section, I'll mix them just the way I was talking about brass in the same kind of way. Now this here, this I can, oh yeah, you know, this isn't sending to my, oops, to my C6. That was a mistake, yeah. So this is set up to uh, for the to give some space to the vocal so basically this is a submix channel i call it c6 or i named it ducking in this temp this template i renamed some stuff so it's clearer for the ones that are using it um but um this bus here i'll send usually i send most of the mix through here and what i'll do is i'll sidechain a compressor and uh, use the signal from the vocals so that means when the vote when the singer comes in, it's pushing, it's compressing back on the band a bit. And this is super subtle, but just a little bit to to carve a, a, a touch of space in the mix for the vocals to sit in. Now, what it what it does for me is it just like instead of having vocals and band kind of interweaved, it just like pushes the band behind a bit and leaves a little gap between a little dynamic gap between the vocals and the the band. And I don't do this throughout the whole mix. I mean, I don't do it in on all the frequencies and left to right. What I do is I'll solo the vocals and I'll solo this uh, frequency on the whole band. And then I will go searching around, depending on which vocal, to see where they blend together too much. So, for example, if I've got a lot of like... So the band sounds like this, and I, I, I listen to... Because uh, it's in solo, and I listen to the vocals. Do these frequencies take away from the, the the body of my vocals and if so then i will go I'll, I'll go select up to which point there's masking happening and then when the singer uh, comes in it's going to compress here so this is going to go down a little bit just enough to push the the, um, the band back this is super subtle i can you know maximum will go to uh i'll 
the furthest I'll go down is like 1, 1 1.2 dBs, 1.3 maybe. Because if I do it too much, there's a problem. If I have to do it too much, there's probably an issue with my frequency balance. So maybe I'm not fixing the problem at the right place. This is just an extra little bit to help get separation in the vocals. And this is one of thousands of moves that will make the mix better in the end. So this isn't one move that'll make the mix 50% better. If that's what's happening, you're not doing the right move. Um, okay, lead vocals. I got my channel here. I set it up in stereo. So I got a lot, of, a lot of these channels are stereo. Most of the tracks are mono. The reason why I set them up in stereo is because I use a lot of this plugin here, which is Dear VR. This is my VR plugin I use all the time. If you check out some videos, you will see me using it all the time. So this needs to be on a, on a stereo track. Basically, you choose your left channel, your right channel, or both, and then you place your source where you want it. Now, the VR needs to uh, output in stereo because it's not your left and your right isn't going to be the same signal. So if you're on a, on a mono track, it sounds kind of weird. Well, it just doesn't really have tons of effect. It just sounds kind of roomy. Or, so that's why I'll have, you know, on my brass, I'll use it. They're all stereo. I'll put the VR on probably yeah, electric guitar, acoustic. Oh, yeah, and EG is electric guitar. I could have specified. Um, so let's end my vocals here or stereo. So same thing, sending to a parallel. Uh, I use the same compressor for pretty much every parallel comps. I could use a, a lot of different comps, whatever. Um, and then both these channels are sending to this bus here. The reason why I do this is I automate the voice on every mix probably. So once I've got a mix that's kind of that kind of is well managed, sits in place, uh, things are relatively at the right level from A to Z, um, I'll automate my vocals to kind of place it to keep it in place because there will be sections where it's a little bit too loud some pronunci pron pronunciations will be too low. The problem with automating two channels here is I've got to have two fingers on the um, on my faders and I'm not going to keep you know sometimes yeah I'm not going to keep them even whatever it's the sound that matters but sometimes it all what I can do is automate just this one. And if I bring this down, all I got is this hyper compressed signal. So it's like I fall back on a foundation of dynamic that sits still. Now I don't want my vocals to sound too compressed sometimes. So I don't want to do that. So I'll automate both like this independently. If I want to make my vocal more di dynamic while I chill out this foundation of this like, com uh, parallel compression foundation, dynamic foundation to the sound. But if I, if I like the way this, um, the signal, uh, the dynamic sound with this, these two keep in the same proportion, I can just automate from my bus. So I might not do tons of processing here. I'm not going to put tons of plugins. I will probably mostly, uh, mostly automate from here. So that is. Yeah, I'll just put this in right and I will do my vocal rides on this channel. And it's and these two don't need to move. So that's why I set this up like that. The problem, okay. Yeah, the problem with these buses here, when you have a group channel and then you put plugins, say I, I have my three brass here and then but I put a ton of plugin on this thing, which I will do and I'll put a ton uh, because I'm using them very subtly sometimes. So I end up having 16 plugs there. If I put a plugin on here, I've noticed it uses more CPU then if I put them on individual individual tracks and the advantage of putting plugins on the individ individual tracks is that I can freeze them. And if I freeze them, I liberate a bit of CPU. I can't freeze on this bus. So I need to print all three together with the with the plugs. That's kind of a pain. So I try to really manage between I'll try to put as much as uh, do as much of the work on the tracks as I can and do a little bit of work on this bus. Oftentimes it doesn't happen. So I end up having to print if I need to print, well, I'm not going to remove tracks after I will just disable them like this with all their plugins and make them invisible. Then I will bring up my stem in between here. And I know that if I need to go back and fix some individual channels, they will be just above. And I can re enable them and work on and re rework on them, reprint them, but that's a little bit of a pain. So I usually do this closer to the end of the mix when I know when everything's automated in place, sounds good. 
and uh, and I might keep working on that stereo stem, but the parts are intact inside the stem. So that's one of the issues with uh, working on buses, but again, it's going to save a lot of trouble for, for other things. Um, notice I don't have many of these tracks stereo here, these audio tracks, because I don't use the VR on drums. I haven't had much success with that. I don't think it sounds super good. Um, yeah, so here is my reverb section. I set them up in effects channel, not in buses. I can set them up in buses, but the effects, I think, seems a bit more optimized for, uh, for having verbs. Um, these are all my, my reverbs. I noted what type of reverb I'll put on here. So this is long 3D plate. So a plate that's got a long sustain and sounds like 3D-ish. Um, for me, mine is the slate digital. Then you have a long verb. So whatever is a long verb. Then a, a wide 3D plate. So something not too long, but something, something wider. Again, I might use another setting from that same slate uh, Bricasti plate, I think. Medium plate, well, another a plate that's shorter. Medium bright room, so a room that's sort of not too big. So these all, ha all have different dimensions. So if I send a vocal through all these verbs, one will resonate this big, one will resonate that long, one will resonate short and high, one will resonate um, bright high and uh, kind of like soft in the, in the low mid. So I can like... With all these verbs, I'll, I'll shape a dome around something or I'll create the air around the, the track that I want with by combining these elements of different verbs. So that's why I have a bunch here. I have delays. I've got this one delay sending to a short verb, which kind of, kind of acts as a spreader on the delay. It technically works as a pre-delay on, um, on uh, that verb, but I've got a lot more control over it. Plus, I can listen to the dry signal of that delay, and I can listen and I can listen to only the verb, which comes out of, uh, I don't know which one here, uh, wide, one of these, maybe, maybe this, or something, whatever. All my verbs go through one bus. Again, this is pretty heavy on the CPU. Um, I might have more reverbs too. Sometimes I have uh, about like uh, a third more. I don't go too far in reverbs because I don't have enough uh, CPU. I have a solid computer but it's not the biggest for sure you know I've only have uh, I only have like 16 gigs uh, of RAM so on this uh, all verb channel I will put a tape sim and um, that I've noticed helps my verbs kind of it helps fill in my verbs a bit and clean them up because reverbs can sound kind of pingy sometimes or so I've just been trying that and I really like uh, I kind of enjoy what I can do with it plus with this all verb um, channel, what I can do is oftentimes I'll print my reverb for, um, and then I'll do different stuff with it, which I'll explain in a different video. But I can export and choose this channel here. Go to my um, group channel. So there's an all verb somewhere here. I can click this and ex export the reverb. I can solo track and just export its reverb and then process the reverb differently, which is super cool. You can do a lot of things uh, that way. After this, I have a track called Reference. This is a track where you import music that sounds like uh, music that have uh, uh, that sounds really good, a good mix. I'll import stuff like uh, I might put in a tune by Ariana Grande. I might put in a tune by. Um, I don't know, man. Anything that I find sounds super good. Stuff like Twenty One Pilots. The mixes are pretty fucking good um, and it just serves as a reference all this or if if there's a mix of the tune already or if I'm getting this from a client um, that's already done a pre-prod I'll drop this into one, a track like this and I might duplicate it to get some more uh, tracks in there and so I've got my stereo out and my ref out reference out because this tune here it, on my stereo out I'll have a limiter I don't want to put any plugins on my reference. I want this to stay the way it is. My limiter is for my mix. So this reference track goes out to the reference output. Now these two outputs are set up on the same channels on my interface. They both come out of one, two. The only difference is this fader here in this area. We, um, oh shit, my camera's in the way so you might not be able to read it. Give me a sec here. Yes. Reference and stereo out. These are the two I was talking about. So yeah, so um, 
that's it. I this I don't want this to be processed on my master bus because I'll be adding compression and tape set, uh, tape sim and a bunch of stuff here, and I want this to stay the way it's it's already mixed and mastered, so I don't want to affect it. So this goes out to my reference bus. This is my whole mix. Everything goes through the stereo out automatically. So just to see the way I set this up is I've got this preset here mixing for home, and I've got my stereo out and my reference out. Both are coming out of Sonar Works one and two, or your interface one and two, whichever you're using. So if ever you want to get a copy of this template, it's available for free download on my website. I'll leave a link below in the description. And if you like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I will be putting up a lot more of these uh, short videos or mixed tutorials. I uh, hope you enjoy.